When aiming, should your lower palm be in contact with the mouse pad or should it float? For the most amount of people, you will aim better with contact so long as it's done correctly. The problem with floating is that we sacrifice control and in particular stopping power. Much like handwriting, we have our hand on the desk to provide a stable base to move from. If you try to write with a floating hand, it's going to feel shaky and imprecise. The main benefit of aiming with a floating lower palm is to reduce friction, so you can move around the mouse pad with less resistance. The thing is, if that's really a problem for you, there are much better solutions that don't require you to sacrifice your aiming ability. My personal favorites are just wearing a sleeve, and while this one doesn't cover the lower palm, the reduction in friction from the rest of the arm can make up that difference, and frequently washing any skin that comes in contact with the pad. This removes oil, sweat, and climbiness, giving you a much smoother glide. There are also sleeves that cover this area, like the Skypad full sleeve if you want to go down that route. Just keep in mind that it can make gripping the mouse a little more difficult. So, what's so good about having it on the desk? Firstly, it provides a stable base for your wrist and fingers to aim from. This doesn't mean you just plant it to one spot and aim from there, it should stay loose and move around with you. The main perk of this stable base is actually friction. Now, friction can get a bad rap in aiming, and people go to all sorts of lengths to try and minimize it, but some amount is crucial. This is most evident with flick shots and stopping power. Stopping power being the ability to stop moving when you want to, like when your crosser is over a target. Having this contact means that when you stop putting effort into a movement, your mouse will stop almost immediately due to that friction. Without it, stopping primarily comes down to your muscles stabilizing the mouse. You can try this yourself, actually, just be careful not to throw your mouse across the room. Do a fast flick with the gap, and you will feel a wobble left to right in your hand and arm as it stabilizes. Then, do the same with no gap, and you may still feel a wobble, but it will be much weaker as the friction is helping to put on the brakes. To use contact optimally, the feet of your mouse should be in line with your lower palm, and the skin of your thumb should be a tiny bit lower, simply because it flattens out a little when it's on the desk. The best way to ensure your mouse grip isn't causing problems with this is to relax your hand on the mouse pad, fingers curled as if you were holding your mouse. You can swipe around a little, and the contact you feel on the lower palm is the same as what you should feel when holding the mouse. The mouse should be able to fit into your hand without raising up the lower palm. When we grip, this pocket in our hand opens up, and that's where our mouse sits. We don't want it sitting up here. Now that we know what the lower palm contact feels like, I'd like to share a tip for it that I find extremely useful to my aim. You don't need the full weight of your hand on the mouse pad. What we can do is slightly lift up our hand. This doesn't mean there should be any gap, but the sensation is like taking weight off the hand. This is awesome because it lets us dynamically adjust our own friction. Unlike other techniques like fingertip skating that I'll link to in the description, while it is dynamic, you don't really need to keep changing it on the fly. Mess around with how much weight you take off to find something that requires little to no effort to maintain, that takes off just enough friction to make moving around your mouse pad feel nice and crisp. You don't need to go overboard with this. Without it, if you're totally relaxed and the full weight of your hand is on the desk, that friction can make your aim feel muddy, slow, and unresponsive. Now, I know there are some outliers like Twists who aim with a gap, but for the vast majority of people, no gap will perform the best. Thanks to everyone watching, my channel has unlocked memberships, which are essentially Twitch subs but for YouTube, so if you'd like to directly support the channel and unlock some great perks like the members only discord, badges, emotes and more, please consider becoming a member. Taking the weight off your hand is only scratching the surface of that style of technique, so if you'd like to learn more, you can check out this video here on fingertip skating. Thanks so much for watching, be sure to subscribe for more content like this, and I'll catch you in the next one.